Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to No Man's Land. It is currently six minutes past one in the afternoon and we didn't really have anything to do this morning. The silage had not finished um, fermenting. The potatoes weren't done, although you can now see there is a strip that is ready to now be done. The silage is also ready, so we're going to get that sold, I think. However, this morning I opened my tent to find this letter. It says, We have been observing your work from the shop and the manager has been impressed. We wish to offer you our services to help you with the expansion of your farm. We can offer you lease services on any farming vehicle and implement. As you only have modest assets, this offer is limited to items with a list price of 25,000 euros maximum, with a total combined list price of all leased items being 60,000 euros or less. These values can be negotiated in the future should your work continue along the same path. Yours sincerely, John Smith, the local shop manager. So, we can now lease equipment, but only small equipment. Hopefully, we're going to make enough money from this that we don't need to lease anything yet. I do have some machines, some small machines that will help over here. But first, we obviously need to uncover this. Woohoo! Look at this. Silage. So, we're not going to be holding on to any of this silage. I, I don't want to do that. I just want to sell it. Sell it and make some money. That's the plan. So, two tons of silage here. That's rather a lot. And we'll see exactly how much we get for that. Probably should fold that down just to keep it all in its position. I'm not, I'm not really sure how well this would do at actually keeping that big pile in position, but there we go. I'm not even convinced that this would work properly. I'd love to know if anyone has actually seen this in real life. Now, it's showing as grass silage. Let's just double check that that is what we want. Because I'm a little worried. Ah yes, grass silage. Silage grass is the uncut stuff. Okay, so let's sell that. We can also... We're not selling it very fast, why not? In fact, we're selling it really slowly. Um, am I doing something stupid here? Okay, we accidentally messed that up. That's as fast as we can sell it. I, I feel like we sell things like hey, much quicker than this. Maybe that's just how it feels. The money is ticking up. Slowly but surely. Okay, that's almost everything sold. Just a hundred liters left. Okay, so nine hundred and fifty eight plus So harvest income was twelve hundred. 1200 for one load. That is much better money. It's of course not going to make us rich, but we already knew that it wasn't going to make us super rich. But this is a massive, massive bonus over what we had originally. So we need to get all of this sold. Hopefully we're looking at 1200 euros for each load and then with the passive income we're getting this is going to set us up quite nicely for maybe getting a new tractor I did say I wanted to buy the field but having thought about it maybe a tractor would be more useful something with a higher horsepower possibly even a front loader if I can manage that if I can swing it so I think the easiest thing to do here is going to be to time lapse it because there is a lot. It takes up quite a long time to sell this stuff. So let's jump immediately to a time lapse.
this is the last load. And this has taken me 45 minutes almost of real time to actually sell everything from that bunker. We are not rich as you can see, but we're doing very, very well compared to how we were. I think we're going to finish around about just shy of 19,000. So I've had a look and in terms of what we can afford, we can only really afford things that are still cheap. So this is actually available right now in a classified. So in here we've got this guy. Now that's very, very low horsepower. We don't really need that. Got this guy here, the Massey. Again, it's kind of a it's a lower horsepower than we've got. The Fent, that is an upgrade for 8,000. And how much could we sell ours for? 3,800. So it would be a slight upgrade, but I'm not sure that we should do it. Because really what I want is something that can attach a front loader. Um, so out of everything I've got here, the Ursus are the only ones that can do that, I believe. Is that right? Yes, a front linkage. So that would cost us 35,220. It's too much for us to lease. It's outside the limits of what they're prepared to let us lease. Because that would obviously make harvesting a lot easier. Harvesting those potatoes. For now, I think we're going to have to do the harvesting the old-fashioned way. So we'll just have a quick double check. That's a subsoiler. That could be very useful. But it's a 120 horsepower requirement. Um, no, so we haven't got anything here. Let's go to Potato Tech. So for topping, I've got this guy. Now I think I could probably use him by reversing. We've also got this one, which is a standard one. This is 3.2 meter width. Really, I need something that's wider than the tractor. I'm not sure that's going to be wider than the tractor. Now, I could lease this. We're not going to lease today, though, because what we're going to do is start the engine back up. First off, we're going to go and refuel. He really needs a refuel. And he also needs a bit of a repair, currently at 44%. So, we're getting refueled and repaired. And then we're going to sleep because I want the entire field to be ready to be topped and of course it's not only one third of it is available and it's gonna get dark soon as well so I think it's a good option to sleep and in the morning we can come back and we can start topping it is very early in the morning but luckily, our shop does open nice and early. So, we need to lease that piece of equipment. So, as we said, potato tech. In fact, let's just have a quick look in the classified just to see if there's anything in here that we might need. So there's a plow. We will need a plow at some point. Anything else? A cedar? No, we don't need that. And in the vehicles? That guy would be useful, but not for the kind of job we're doing today. And if it's not useful today, we're not buying it. So, back here, potatoes. We're going to lease this guy. Because I want to make sure that it is wider than the tractor. And I'm almost certain this is. So we can lease that because it's only 10,000. That means we've got 50,000 remaining to lease. with a 25,000 limit cap. 25,000 euro list price cap. That's what I meant. So as you can see, that is that is big. And this requires 65 horsepower and we have got 65 exactly, I think. So this is gonna really push us, but it definitely means we're wider. And that's, to me, probably the more important point. So, drop him down, and I believe turn him on as well. There we go. 
going to turn him on as well. And so we can see he is now topping. That's great news. And because he's a bit wider as well, I'm hoping it will take a bit less time. That's the idea, anyway. In reality, maybe it won't work like that. So let's just double check. So that is now ready to harvest. Perfect. That's what I wanted. So we're not destroying the crop. And we are not. Yeah, we're not destroying the crop, which is what I wanted, really. So we'll take this edge off here. And I think what I'm going to have to do is just jump cut this. It's going to be a really long job, and I don't want to have too many time lapses in the same episode. You can see that lovely line there where I managed to destroy the crop. Excellent work, Jack. Excellent work. This is where we're really pushing him by going uphill. Oh, yes, we are. Okay, so I will now vanish, and when I return, this field will be topped. This job has actually taken no time at all, so that's good. I'm very pleased about that. I did manage to cause a very small amount of crop damage because I didn't notice the way the topper was working. Um, you can't actually do five furrows in this, or five rows. You have to do four. Um, if you try doing five, it just makes a bit of a mess of it. And you just destroy a lot of crop. But, luckily, we've not destroyed too much. Okay. So, we can go and drop this guy back off. Because we are not going to need this. Um, we will do more potatoes. But, we're not going to be doing them... We're not going to be doing it for a few days. Or, well, having said that, how much is it going to cost me to keep this guy? Per day, a hundred. Ah, oh, you know what? For a hundred euros, we could just keep it. Because we haven't even hit the one hour mark yet. So, <clears throat> kind of makes sense to keep it. And we can use it the next time we have potatoes. Because I think we'll probably replant that directly with potatoes. Next job then is harvesting. Okay, so for the harvesting, this is what we're using. I did start talking and explaining and doing everything and then realised that I hadn't actually pressed record. So apologies for that. But basically, this little machine is going to go along and he's just going to take all these potatoes, pick them up, and then dump them onto the ground. So we are going to have to obviously go along and collect them all afterwards. That's okay. I think we can manage that. It's, it's a little annoying, but... I mean... I don't see another option, really. So going to take a little bit of time to do this, of course. In fact, it's going to take quite a lot of time to do this. But he is working. And that's the important thing. For picking it up, I think we're going to have to fit a front loader to this guy and do it that way. That's going to be the easiest, I think. But I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't quote me. I may change my mind later on. You see, I also didn't manage to work out exactly how to use this tool. Um, so I did end up 
not dropping the potatoes at the very start. But it's working. You know, it's not the biggest machine in the world, but potato equipment isn't very big anyway. And it's not the best solution to have potatoes just littering the ground. But again, what else am I going to do? This is, uh, this is the only option I've got, really. As annoying as it seems. It's just the cleanup job that's going to really make this difficult, I think. But we're currently getting around about 19.7 tonnes per hectare. It, although it is jumping quite a lot by the looks of it. Significantly, in fact. So, as I was saying in the section where I forgot to press record, I cannot do all of this today. It's just not possible. And I also... I don't want to, really. I feel like I'll be rushing it if I try and do it all today. Especially because there's no chance for me to actually collect them. Not today. No way. It is not a possibility to do the collecting. So, may as well kind of split the job over two days completely. That's my thought anyway. Do this the way it actually was before. I think this will work. If I stick right in the middle, it should be dropping some potatoes. Exactly, perfect. Just have to make sure I'm sticking in the middle. And then I think I cover both rows perfectly well. I'm really hoping as well that we're going to get a good amount from this. That's the idea, really. But because this is such a big job, I'm probably going to end up doing a fair amount of this off camera. I think. At least today we can start this. We can see the potatoes dropping out, and that is always good. Of course, I'm going to have to get a trailer to put all of these potatoes into. Because it's absolutely no use me picking them all up off the ground and then not having anywhere to put them. That would be rather pointless. There's, uh, there's a couple of machines like this in the Grimmy pack, actually, that I've used. Um, and they work very well. The same idea, really. Just go along and pull the potatoes out, but drop them on the floor. I like them. Because potato harvesters themselves do fill up very, very quickly. small area. 
just by here. I'm not sure how exactly I missed that. This is going to be the tricky thing with this, I think. Oh no, there weren't any actual potatoes there. Okay. Oh, the rain is coming. Rain is coming. Okay. Well, we're just going to finish this little bit by here anyway. And then, I think we'll finish the episode by actually buying something. Not leasing, buying. And that is because... I think as we go with the harvesting, we're going to also have to be collecting. Because even though Seasons isn't on, and in fact Seasons doesn't affect potatoes anyway, I don't, I don't want to be so unrealistic that I am actually leaving potatoes on the ground in the rain. I mean, you just won't do it, Roger. These are your most valuable things, especially if you're me and you've just sold everything else. I'm not going to leave these guys lying all over the floor. They're worth a fortune. Which reminds me, how much did we actually make today from the selling? Uh, oh, it's a new day. 13,270 is what we made yesterday from selling that silage. That is very cool. I'm happy with that. That's a good amount of money. Especially because it's grass and grass is available in abundance, so now we have that silage pit, whenever we cut, we can just always put it in there, and we don't even have to sell it straight away, we can sell it at another time when we think it's worth doing it. When we're sort of you know, running out of money a little bit, we can do it there. There we go. Right, I'm going to drop this guy by here. Wow, we've used up all of our fuel already. That's quite impressive. Right. Let's go and quickly refuel. Oh, in fact, we'll do the refueling after. What I want to do is I want to make a purchase today, or two purchases, in fact. One is an upgrade, one is a purchase. No, three purchases. I'm going crazy now. I'm not going crazy because I'm an idiot. I'm going crazy because I just kind of forgot that I'm making multiple uh, purchases. So, let's turn him off. We need to perform an upgrade first. That is what he looks like now. Uh, front loader attacher, yes. So we're going to put on a front loader. So he is now set up for a front loader. Now that we've got that, we need to buy a front loader. I'm just double checking here to make sure there are no front loaders. Ooh, ooh, that's cool. We could get ourselves a very small manure spreader, but it would wipe out all of our money. Ooh, but a loading wagon, wow, okay, a loading wagon would make the grass work much, much easier to do. And it's only seven and a half thousand. I'll be honest with you, that was not planned. I did not know we were going to do that. So we're going to take the second hand one. Buy. Okay, so we have just wiped out a lot of our money, of course, but, uh, you know, it's okay. Just have a quick check. Just, just you know, just to be sure. Oh, there's a Valtro of 85 horsepower. We don't need that. We need big. We need big. Another 65, 66. We've already got that. Okay. Right. So, we need a front loader. Now, is there some kind of special one to be used with our... I don't think there is. What is this? That's an interesting idea. Right, I think we're going for standard. 
So we're going to go with the FZ30. That's expensive. Very expensive. And then we need to go over bucket. So yeah, universal bucket. That's what we're going with. Okay, so now we've got 5,000. Can we get a trailer for 5,000? That's the question. So let's just scroll through. Ooh, 4,500. Not bad. 3,600. These car trailers, I think, are a bit too small. So the old wooden wagon is very... It's a good idea, but it's a very small capacity. The dumper, 2.25 capacity. 5,200, okay. That one axle trailer is capable of taking everything, interestingly. But it's only 495 metric tons, okay. What? Uh, I'm not sure how that works. It shouldn't be metric tons 300. No. Uh, right, we've got this guy here. 930 tons. Oh, right, okay. I'm going crazy, that's why. So that's 2,000 metric tons. This one here is 5,730. That is the biggest. But is it going to be too big? I'm wondering if we should start a little smaller. Um, so, standard is 1,050. That's 540. This guy here is 9... 30. 9.30 isn't a lot. That dumper is 22.50. I think we could pull the dumper. I'm just a little worried that, about pulling this. I think we can do it. However, actually, the smallest capacity is 1,860. I'm not even sure we could lift over the side of that, so that is probably the one to go for. Um, I think we should get this second hand. So labels, we're going to standard, we'll go with standard. Wheels, we have mud guards, chunky tires, okay. Chunky tires look nice. Chunky tires and mud guards. Are they? They're not chunky. I think we should go for the chunky tires, why not? Spare wheel. So we can even remove the spare. Ah, yes, I remember looking at this. I think it looks cool with the spare bomb. Right, so 3920. There we go. So, we have got some new purchases. Oh, yes. We have also just spent all of our money. But at the same time, I really do think it was worth it. Because we've got ourselves a trailer. We needed a trailer so that we can you know, make some of these jobs a little easier. The loading wagon was honestly just by chance. It was not planned at all to have a loading wagon. But it's going to make the grass work so much easier. Grass, hay, everything is going to be easier with that. So we've got a front loader and a bucket. Got a trailer. We've got a loading wagon. So I am going to refill. And while I'm refilling, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.